Hey guys, so Tesla just released a new software update for their fleet of vehicles that don't really introduce anything game changing or groundbreaking. I'd say it's more quality of life updates, but there are two things in particular that I want to cover in this video that really do have a positive impact on my day to day driving. So the first change that I want to highlight can be found in the service section of your settings menu. When you scroll down and tap on wheels, in the case of my Model Y performance, I can tell the car what size rims I have to properly adjust the software to show range estimates tire pressure and car visualization properly. Now the next change is a brand new feature here added for everybody that owns a Tesla. It was initially locked behind the full self-driving paywall so you needed to spend the eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars in order to access this feature as well as the other features that make up full self-driving but now it's been made available to everyone that owns a Tesla and some full self-driving owners might feel jaded by this decision from Tesla to open it up to everybody but it's such a small feature I really wouldn't be bothered by it. So the feature that I'm talking about is green traffic light chime and can be enabled by going to your autopilot settings and then scrolling way down to the bottom. You simply toggle this on and now when the car sees a light change from red to green, it will play a sound for you, letting you know it's safe to drive. It's so smart that it even knows arrows. So if your car sees that you are in a turning lane and the people next to you get a green, but your arrow is still red, it won't chime. That blew my mind the first time that I realized it was that smart. This honestly was one of my favorite features that came included in full self-driving. I know that it might sound weird that such a small feature was one of my favorites, but it's one that I was making use of every single day. I'm not using autopilot and full self-driving all day, every day. I drive around between homes and photograph them. I do real estate photography as well as, of course, YouTube. Um, but usually when I'm driving around on the back roads, I'm hitting stoplights and being able to have the car tell me when to go is really nice because I will say I'm guilty at the stoplight, throwing my head down my phone to respond to text messages, change the song, do any of those things. So it makes me look like less of an idiot. I don't clog up as much traffic because now the car is looking out for me. And also there is a really good utility behind it. If let's say you are driving during the morning time or the nighttime, say you're in rush hour traffic and you're sitting at a stoplight and the sun is blazing through the windshield and it's just right behind the stoplight and it hurts to look. So the car does all that for you and tells you, hey, you've got a green light, you can go. But a word of caution it isn't always perfect. Sometimes I've noticed that a light can be facing towards you ever so slightly because maybe it's a weird intersection and the car chimes at you because it thinks you have a green light when in fact another lane has a green light. So just be wary of that when you end up using this because now it's available to all people that own a Tesla. Now the next change can be found in the Bluetooth menu and this one is pretty inconsequential but now when you see your remembered devices it shows an icon for each of them and tells you which is connected. It's a nice little touch but again really the only difference is in the UI. Now initially when updating my car this was the only patch note that was shown within my car on the center screen there. It was the improvements made to the seatbelt safety system. I really don't understand why Tesla makes their patch notes displayed in the car after upgrading so minimal but they leave a lot of digging to be done by us the people that actually drive their car. Now this update reads this enhancement builds upon your vehicle's superior crash protection based upon regulatory and industry standards standard crash testing by now using Tesla Vision to help offer some of the most cutting edge seatbelt pretensioner performance in the event of a frontal crash. Your seatbelts will now begin to tighten and protect properly restrained occupants earlier in a wider array of frontal crashes. You know, whenever I get an update that improves the safety of my Model Y, it just makes me smile, right? I mean, it's great that Tesla gives us these different things within the software updates that you know, improve the usability of the car that give us new features that make the car more fun. Uh, you know, maybe it even changes up the way that we interact with our vehicle. But when they go and make our vehicles more safe through just a software update, I mean, that's what really makes owning a Tesla worth it to me. I know these vehicles can be more expensive. I know that sometimes it can be a pain to charge them on the road, but having the ability to drive the most safe vehicle in the world makes me really comfortable while I'm driving around. And I think that it makes other people really comfortable, right? That's one of the reasons why people want to go and purchase one of these cars is because of how safe they are. I mean, who is going and continuing to test their cars and, you know, look through crash data and make improvements to airbag, airbag deployment and seatbelt retention, pretension performance, right? I mean, these are things that are just next level and it's what really makes me proud to own one of these vehicles. Now, when I first read over these patch notes, they used some big words, right? Like, 
pre-tensioner performance. And I kind of was like, okay, cool, they improved the, the seat belts and they're now going to operate better during a crash. But reading more into it, it's kind of cool that Tesla Vision is now getting more autonomy features, like it's gaining more control over the whole entire experience by not only predicting a crash and trying to help us avoid that crash, but in the event of a crash actually happening, it's going to prepare us even better by tightening up our seatbelt. And I feel like that's just the first step forward for Tesla to continue to make these vehicles even more safe through Tesla Vision to then be able to avoid accidents, which is just really impressive. And now a change that was implemented in a previous software update to Tesla vehicles automatically applied the brake of the car to match the full regenerative braking that you would usually encounter when driving. This came into effect, for example, when your car was cold and needed to warm up or if you fully charged your car. So for all those times in which your regenerative braking was limited, the car would compensate by using the actual physical brake and pushing down the brake pedal. Apparently this was only rolled out to a few cars initially, but now has been rolled out to more vehicles in the fleet. So I guess that Tesla just needed to fine tune how much the brakes needed to be applied by collecting data from cars on the road. Now, moving on, finally, the change that's probably made the biggest difference to me, that is battery at arrival. This pretty much means now, right from the main map screen, you can see your distance remaining, time remaining, and now your predicted battery capacity upon arrival. For years, you had to view the entire trip and then scroll to the very bottom to see it here. So it was two different actions, but now it's front and center all of the time, which really makes monitoring your energy easier. And for those with range anxiety, it'll probably make you feel a whole lot more comfortable. I noticed that they also changed the UI and made the battery icon that they use slightly smaller and more bold around around the outside. It's so funny how such a small little change like this can make such a big difference, but for me, it's really nice to be able to always monitor what my estimated battery percentage is gonna be when I arrive at my destination, because sometimes I just get in that mood where I really wanna drive my car a little bit faster than usual, and when I do, I can see how that directly correlates by monitoring my battery life right there on the screen. I don't need to touch anything. I don't need to tap on the full trip and swipe to the bottom. It's just right there for me to view. Anyway, guys, that is all That is all for this update to Tesla's fleet of vehicles. It is 2020.2022.20.7. Some really good updates here, some really good quality of life changes. And I have to say that after continuing to think about the whole seatbelt thing, that is really impressive. And it's cool to see that Tesla Vision is just getting better and better by the day. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.